This year, I'm making a game where every single game dev decision is made by you. Welcome back to Game Baking Together. Wait, no, don't swipe away. Watch my cat catch this toy. Oh no, there's no escaping this. You are making this game with me, whether or not you're skeptical of the idea. That's funny. And I, I get where you're coming from. I've actually gotten a few other comments in the same vein as that one. The thing about it though is that I'm limiting how much control I'm giving the public by using polls. With the polls, I'm the one asking the questions that I specifically need an answer to, and I'm limiting the answers to the ones that would make the most sense based on the context of the previous answers to previous polls and the context of where. Last month, I asked you three questions. What genre of game should we create, in which gameplay style should the game present itself, and in what perspective will players be experiencing the game? And the results were... What genre of game should we create? Adventure. Okay, all right. In which gameplay style should the game present itself? Platformer. Ah, an adventure platformer? Okay. <laughs> what perspective will players be experiencing the game is first person? Huh, the first game that comes to mind is, um, what's that game called? The, the... Bunny hop game on Dreamcast. I'm gonna find its name and I'll put it here. Yeah, okay. Okay, well the first person definitely caught me off guard, so let's let's see let's see what we can do with that. Maybe not as wacky as I was expecting, but that's okay. Looks like we're making a first person platforming adventure game. So I started putting together the platforming systems, going with a more bouncy, collect-a-thon-like platforming style, but in first person rather than the traditional third. And in an attempt to get ahead, I immediately started planning the first brainstorming session with the simple goal of figuring out the core mechanic in mind. A big thank you to Kirin, Wicked Delight, Cubic, Andrew Nursh, Kinked Kim, Primitive Dev, and Ur for joining that first session. Good enough. These were some of the ideas discussed, and as you can see, we went a little overboard, but it was a lot of fun. I took the ideas that made sense and grouped them into one of two groups, hyper-focused or broad, and assigned them one or more of the following four categories, quantity, spatial, action, or state. Hyper-focused mechanics can exist within one of these four categories and have the potential of being refined and expanded inwards into other categories. These are narrow but deep mechanics. For example, grappling hook, which is action, can be expanded into quantity by limiting its usage, into spatial by hooking on the environment or objects and pulling them towards you, and into state by differing the rules when swinging, having hooks with different effects, and activating objects with your hook. While these new sub-mechanics cannot stand on their own, they provide the base grappling hook mechanic with a lot of depth. Broad mechanics, on the other hand, cannot be contained within a single category and need to bleed into others for them to make sense. Those mechanics don't mean much on their own, but with additional mechanics and refinement, they can serve as a foundation and grow outwards into additional mechanics, which means they have a lot of potential. These are wide, but shallow mechanics. Eventually, I boiled them down to a poll with four choices. Stamina management, grappling hook, constant movement, and photography camera. The winning option was... Grappling hook. Of course. Definitely not copying another popular game dev YouTuber's game. The mechanics definitely got a lot of potential, though. It's gotten more popular over the last decade, but it's been around in some way, shape, or form for a very long time. Now, I don't know how many first-person platforming adventure games there are out there that revolve around the grappling hook mechanic, but I've definitely seen it in a lot of first-person games like Titanfall, Doom Eternal, A Story About My Uncle, and even Halo Infinite. Implementing the grappling and swinging was simple. Here's some math. Pause if you want to examine it. But making grappling work in first person is definitely a bit of challenge in the game's current state. I experimented with a few concepts at first, changing the FOV, nudging the camera to slightly look towards other grapplable nodes, and even switching to a third person camera altogether while swinging. The root of the problem lies in the lack of peripheral vision when in first person and having to physically move the character's head around when looking for the next node you can swing to, especially while swinging. I have a few ideas on how to make it work, but they're not exactly ideas that I can experiment with yet because they rely on graphical elements and the interface. 
but I'll delve into them in a future update. I figured I'd pull out all the stops and add in as many grappling hook related mechanics as possible. This includes swinging, ziplining yourself to nodes or surfaces, and pulling objects towards you. However, I'm not completely satisfied with how I've implemented those for now. I want the players to have more granular control over the mechanics rather than it being contextual. This means the player should be able to launch the grappling hook onto any node or object, and from there, perform a second action to determine whether they swing, zip, or pull, with the possibility to cancel out and switch to a different action. I definitely plan on adding more grappling mechanics once we start exploring traversal, modifiers, and combat, assuming there will even be combat, so stay tuned for more polls on Discord. Next, I put together this beast of a board for the next set of polls. I used Milanote for this, which is actually an incredibly handy tool for brainstorming and putting together informational or inspirational boards. I plan on using this a lot more going forward to keep track of tasks, updates, major features, and more general documentation of the game and its progress. If you'd like to try it out for yourself, you can do so for free using the link in my description. The board itself showcased all the themes, settings, world experiences, and aesthetics that I'm able and willing to implement into the game. I used descriptive text, images, and existing games as examples to make sure that every option is described and explained clearly. The new polls were how should the players experience the game world, from what themes should the game's narrative take inspiration, in what setting should the game take place, and in what aesthetic should the game present itself. It sure is, Ur. My hope was that this board would allow you to truly understand what I had in mind for each option and help you make informed votes rather than just voting on whatever you think is most popular. So hopefully, the winning options won't be horror, post-apocalyptic, metroidvania, with a retro or low-poly aesthetic. <sighs> it's a retro horror-themed post-apocalyptic metroidvania, isn't it? In what setting? Post-apocalypse. I knew it. I knew it. Why? The aesthetic. Cartoon, self-shaded. Okay, not what I expected. I was expecting retro and low-poly. I thought that would be the most popular. And Hub world. The only one I'm actually happy about. The one I wanted, Hub world, um, is the, the world experience. The theme, fantasy. Damn, that's the worst one. Oh no, it's not fantasy, it's sci-fi. I thought the, the ordering was the top one was the most popular, but I'm looking at the individual numbers. It's sci-fi, post-apocalypse, cell-shaded, Upload. Perfect! Mm, okay, yeah. <laughs> sci-fi saved it. So it turns out the combination isn't too bad. We're making a sci-fi themed first-person adventure platformer set in a post-apocalyptic world with grappling hook mechanics and a hub world all presented in cell shaded visuals. And after thinking about it for a bit, I think I already came up with how to implement the theme, setting, and world experience into the narrative. Here's what I have in mind. Let's set the stage. The future, the world, is striving. However, not for long. As massive obelisk-like obsidian towers fall from space, our world falls into flames. Coastal flooding, earthquakes, hurricanes, landslides, tsunamis, tornadoes, volcanic activity, wildfires. Death counts surge. Society crumbles. No one knows the purpose of the cosmic towers. We know they are the cause of all this. But approaching them is dangerous. They exude radiation. Mutations are rampant. We cannot study them. We cannot defeat them. It has been decades and humanity has fallen into apocalypse. Incongruous scorching towers loom over us as we desperately attempt to survive in their shadows. However, there is a glimmer of hope. As a child of mutation, you are able to approach the towers. You can harness the alien technology found inside to find your way to the top and take those wretched towers down. It is up to you. End this blight on our world once and for all. So what do you think? The narrative implements the sci-fi theme but that's going to be reinforced by the hookshot arm made out of alien tech. Uh, the post-apocalyptic setting is there, 
and the inside of the towers will serve as the hub worlds. Upgrading your arm will unlock more traversal mechanics, which will allow you to explore more areas of the hub world as well. We'll be doing the next brainstorming session on this code exclusively with Andrew David Plus subscribers. So make sure you subscribe on Patreon and join us on Discord to discuss. See you there. <sighs> That's bad. Hold your head straight. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. I did it! Just that one line. Mm. 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 Mm.